Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. All right, well, welcome to Getting to Know You. My name is Joe Nash. Today we're going to be speaking with a local author, Eric Looper. He writes young adult novels. He and another local author, Colleen Peritor, they're going to be doing a, um, a workshop on June 4th over in Troy at the Hilton Garden Inn, an all-day workshop if you're um, an aspiring children's or young adult author or a middle grade author or even a picture book author. There's all these categories. So welcome, Eric. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, I, I just want to ask you, um, before we talk about the seminar and if any aspiring writers out there want to come and, or sign up, they can go to ericlooper.com. It'll be on the screen here. Um, as a librarian, I, there's been an, ex you know, we think kids don't read anymore, all ages, and teenagers, but there's been an explosion of, uh, in publishing, because I, I'm in the library every day, I see all this. And you know, Barnes & Noble, they have the whole departments now, just for teens and kids. What, what, is, um, what do you think is driving this explosion in kids, maybe the last 10 years or so? It's funny. I remember reading an article that called it the um, young adult or the children's renaissance. Okay. And renaissance means rebirth. But yeah. quite frankly, uh, I wouldn't call this a rebirth because this is the first time that children's literature has been so big in the market um, over the past few years. It's the only segment in the bookstores and in the libraries that have been growing by leaps and bounds. Oh, really? Okay. Um, now, I, I'm, I have these books here. I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold them up. We're not going to talk about the books, but just so people watching, um, we're, we're going to talk about the workshop in a minute. But the other teacher, um, Colleen Peritor, along with Eric, they've written about in the last seven years alone 17 books. And um, here, these are Eric's. But anyway, I'm just showing this because you're getting very successful um, authors, although. Eric is a chiropractor by day. I'm not sure what Colleen does, but <laughs> she's full-time author. But um, and luminary. And the, no, and not. And that's right. And that you know, we're not all J.K. Rowling or Stephanie Myers. They're they're one in a million, but they're very successful authors. Um, one of Colleen's um, series is the Wedding Planner series. It's going to be a movie on TV, and Eric has had some interest in um, having some of his things filmed also. But. Um, so you're going to be having two very successful authors out there, and they're going to be covering everything from picture books, middle grade, young adult, and um, or, um, middle grade, or um, what was the other one? Chapter books. Chapter books, okay. So um, let's see. We've just been a, how many markets are, I just mentioned them. Talk, talk about all these different markets that are out there for these aspiring children's and young adult authors. Well, this is something that's really never happened before. I mean, 20 years ago, there were picture books, and yeah. there were a few teen books out there. Um, and then kids would sort of leap into yeah. adult yeah. books. Um, but over the past few decades, uh, there's been so much development in the world of children's literature. And it's understandable that when people approach it, they kind of don't know how to navigate yeah. uh, the whole industry and people don't even know what classification, if they've written something, they don't well, necessarily know even what classification it falls into or how to define it. Well, sometimes in the library we don't even know where to put them. You know, the teen room, the kids room, the, the dog. <laughs> That's right. And, um, you know, so, you know, there's certain specific qualities to each of these types of books right. that put it into that category. And, and um, you know, what we want to do with our workshop is we want to help people, you know, go from that idea, that basic idea and and give them the action steps necessary to bring it from that idea to a completed work and then bring it out into the into the publishing community. Right, okay, now is there, an, I don't know if this is a good word, but for any of these levels of kids or YA, is there a formula or is that a bad word? I don't want to, is there a formula for this or, you know, you know, Colleen on her website um, was writing about um, you should try to tell tell a universally true story in an original way, although, what's the old saying, there's only like five plots in all of, <laughs> all <laughs> yeah. of literature. But, so, is formula a bad, are, are there formulas? You know, there? I think that um, 
there's so much experimentation going on oh, right yeah. now in children's lit. I mean, if you just pull 10 random books off of the shelves, you'll see um, graphic novels, you'll see books that are sort of these written book graphic novel hybrids like right. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, things like okay, that. Yeah. There's so much experimentation going on right now and publishers are sort of loving that that ability to go into new territory and experiment in interesting okay. ways. So that you're saying the market is pretty big. It's pretty huge yeah. for, for all this. Yeah. All right, so now we'll, we'll talk about the workshop. Again, it's going to be June 4th. It's a Saturday, 9 to 3, over at the Hilton Garden Inn up on Hoosick Street. It does cost $99. You can get information on ericlooper.com. But tell us, um, first off, why are you and Colleen um, doing this seminar for these aspiring writers? <laughs> well, Co Colleen and I are, uh, are writing partners, and uh, oh. periodically we will meet and we'll share chapters or segments and we'll exchange ideas and give each other suggestions as to what may or may not work. And, uh, you know, of course, w you know, when two writers meet, you know, the, the conversation invariably turns to, hey, what's been going on? And um, somehow we got onto the conversation of, boy, I've been getting a lot of emails lately mm -hmm. from aspiring authors um, saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know the next step to take or I have this idea. How do I go about uh, transforming that into mm -hmm. something that can get out into the marketplace? And it just so happened that I was getting the same types of emails um, from different people. And so both of our light bulbs, I think, went mm. on at the same time. And we said, you know, let's, let's teach now, a are, workshop Are these this. people, when they email you and Colleen, are they people that have sort of com completed work or almost completed and they don't, they don't really know the next step? Or is it people who are only, only have an idea and they want to start? All of, the, <laughs> all of the above. And we're going to try to address... Uh, we're going to try to address everything from start to finish. So from that initial concept, um, how to format it, how to, um, you know, how to work it in a way that will become palatable, and then how to get it out into the marketplace. All right, so it's, it's going to be a nuts and bolts kind of thing. So what, what are some of the, this goes from 9 to 3, so what are some of the components that you've broken down that people will be what can they expect if they're interested in this? We're, we're hoping to cover issues from how do I get started, where do your ideas come from, where and how do I submit, um, how do I contact or meet editors and agents, um, how do I know when my manuscript is ready, um, how do I write a query letter that gets some attention. Um, Colleen and I, uh, you know, in discussing uh, the format for the workshop, um, I asked her, how long did it take you to figure all this stuff out? And she shrugged and said, well, at least two years. And, you know, my answer was about the same. Actually, my answer was more like four. I'm a slower learner, <laughs> I suppose. But, but um, we're, so what we've decided to do is try to take all that information that we learned the hard way and yeah. just condense it down into a step-by-step, -step, this is what you need to do, okay. this is what you need to know. Now, on Colleen's website, it, she mentions... Um, she had 179 rejections, and I was asking you before we started, how many rejections did you get for your, your books before you sort of got published? I mean, I um, as many as Colleen. <laughs> I would say I'm in the same ballpark. I, uh, I never, uh, you know, I didn't keep the, the notches on the wall or anything uh, like that, but um, it was easily over 100 rejections. Okay, well, I don't know. She, came up, she must have counted because 179. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the biggest... Um, so of all these steps you're talking about, what, what are sort of the biggest stumbling blocks other than actually writing the book? I mean, what are, what are some of the key things that you're going to be concentrating um, on? Well, the first thing is, is that whatever you're deciding to write, you need to understand that niche in the marketplace. So it's really important to read. Um, you know, uh, be really familiar with what's current, what's popular, and what's being mm -hmm. bought, which means what's being consumed. Um, so we're going to focus on the, the, the style, styles of writing and, 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 um, and what people should be doing as, as far as getting that first step. But there are so many issues, with, even with regard to how to format the manuscript mm -hmm. and what's the difference between a query letter and a cover letter okay. and you know, when do I need a, a, a synopsis of my book. These are things that people just have mm -hmm. no idea of the answer, uh, of the answer to. Okay. And so we're, we're just hoping to go step by step. This is how you need to format. This is what you need to do. This is um, you know, how you take that idea and take that next okay. step. Now, one of the things you're going to be talking about is, um, is uh, how, do you, how you pitch your book. I always hear this term. What, what, is, what does that mean, pitch? You, you know, it's funny. Some, <laughs> some people call it a, uh, an elevator pitch. And the reason they call it an elevator pitch is they always say, if you had you know, 30 seconds 
in an elevator with the editor of your okay. choice, okay. what would you say to them? Mm -hmm. And so many people um, don't understand the importance of that, um, of just taking your concept and distilling it down into two or three sentences. Um, and it's, that can be a really difficult task yeah. to do when your brain is immersed in an entire book, mm -hmm. all the subplots and details, but knowing how to take that plot and distill it down so that you can communicate it goes a long way. Okay, and one of the things on your little flyer here is a, a 20 word or less, is that sort of the what you're trying to hone it down to? <laughs> You know, they always say with uh, in the art of picture books, the shorter the better. Um, you need to try to condense it as uh, as well as possible um, okay. with the sparsity of words so that you can communicate better. All right, so you're going to be talking about the pitch and how, how to get in touch with um, publishers and the query letters and all that. So it's not really, you're not going to really be going over people's manuscripts chapter by chapter. That's not really what you're... We are hoping to do some first discussions on first pages. Okay. So um, when people uh, register, we're hoping that they'll be willing to bring in even some anonymous first pages without okay. names on it so that we can use them as examples, read them aloud, and discuss okay. what may or may not be working. So you, you're going to be working on, so you're going to be working on people can bring their, it says here, bring your first page and, mm -hmm. and you know, paper and all that. Yeah. Um, well, what, do you have, um, an, since Colleen is, has been involved in e-books, picture books, and you're up to YA. Let's, let me just talk a little bit about those genres. What do you think? You write YA. What, 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 what makes a good YA novel, you think? Uh, young adult novels, uh, you know, I love writing young adults. Of course, my next one is middle grade, but um, I love writing young adult novels. And the books typically deal with that transitional period from going from that point of being a child mm -hmm. to to growing into an adult. So um, for me at least, with my writing, I like to work in that, uh, young children like to think of the world in black and white. Um, good versus evil, Voldemort versus Dumbledore, mm -hmm. or Harry Potter. Um, as we get older, we understand that things aren't necessarily black and white, there's a lot of gray in between. And so most of my books deal with that discovery that things aren't as cut and dried as I had originally thought. And so that's the sort of common theme with what I do. Discovery of that gray um, growing up world. Yeah. One um, thing, um, I was on Colleen's website, and Colleen and Eric both have great websites. Have, they have good advice, not just about their books, they have good advice about writing. But one thing Colleen um, writes in her, on her little blog, not a blog, her website about trying to become a writer, is Aspiring writers out there should join a critique group. What, what, is, what, is, what is that? Um, um, <clears throat> a critique group is a grouping of authors who, or writers who come together periodically to share what they do. Um, what I'm good at, someone else may not be as good at, mm -hmm. and what, where my weaknesses lie, they may have strengths. And so um, it's, it's, it's really nice periodically to sit down with a group of writers who you trust. Um, and this can happen in person at the local cafe, or, or it can actually happen online. I'm on, in an online critique group as well, okay. um, where people share what they are working on and, um, and help each other uh, to improve. Oh, okay. And um, so let's see, I think we covered, what, what, are, so what else are you, do you think? You now this goes from nine to three. What else are you going to be covering? Well, you know, we're really hoping to to bring. You know, we've we've talked about a lot of the sort of nuts and bolts yeah. of what we want to cover, um, but we really want to make it a fun day where people um, also uh, grow comfortable with the idea of becoming a children's writer, understanding that it's not an insurmountable task to write a book, um, and also to start making connections locally and regionally mm -hmm. with other aspiring authors. Um, you know, I think of when I was, before I had my first book published and the people that I came up with um, through, uh, you know, through the course of publishing our first books, we all kind of improved and, and moved forward together. And so it's really, that sense of community is really important and so we're hoping to instill um, some networking also mm -hmm. um, to bring some fun into it just to say, hey, you know what, this isn't all about, you know, the format of my query letter, but it's about finding the joy in it and, and learning why you love to write and, and um, why it's important for you to have oh, okay. that book on the shelf. Um, now, one, one question that comes up in all this nuts and bolts stuff, I don't know if you have an agent, but how important is an agent? Do, do people, are, is that one thing you're going to be covering? 
Yeah, we're, we're going to be happy to answer any right. questions that anyone has, but um, talking about the concept of an agent and whether or not you need one is certainly uh, something we will be covering. Um, I sold my first book with no agent. Mm -hmm. um, so is it absolutely necessary? Uh, no, it's not. But does it help quite a bit? Absolutely. My subsequent books all sold mm -hmm. uh, via my agent. Uh, and you know, not only uh, did was she able to do that business side of things better than I was able to do it, but we were able to target the editors uh, who have a specific interest in the types of things that I was working okay. on. Okay. So, what would you say? Um, what What do you, when people are writing, aspiring writers are there? What, what's the number one or two thing that you think really holds people back from? Really making that step, maybe even to come to a workshop like yours. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people write and don't do anything with it. To actually say, I'm going to, what, what, what do you think really holds? I think in a lot of ways it's fear. Yeah. Uh, people fear rejection. People fear putting themselves out there. Um, when you write a book, I mean, you know, here's, this is like, as, uh, like a farcical comedy for middle graders, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of who I am in this book. I mean, there's a lot of my emotion in this book. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult as a writer to separate myself from the emotion that's in that book. And so it's a big leap to actually put it out into the, the world. Thing, yeah. And then that fear that goes along with the concept of, well, what if someone doesn't like it? Mm. Um, so one of the things we're going to try to do is embolden people to say, hey, you know what? When someone reads what you write, it doesn't necessarily mean they have a window to your soul. It's almost like... Um, Th they can understand you better, but a lot of it's b buried and woven into the plot in a way that you don't need to be as afraid of it. All right, so people, that's, uh, yeah, that is, I mean, you do put your, a, lot, a lot of the teen novels that I've read, they're kind of very emotionally at a fever pitch sometimes. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's, how, that's how teens, that's how, how teens are. Mm -hmm. um, so that is going to be, I'll just say it again, there's a lot of information on ericlooper.com. You can sign up and register there. This show is going to be on right up until June 4th, which is the day of this workshop over in Troy. Um, it does cost $99, but you're going to be having two very successful authors there. Um, let's see. What else? Is there anything else I've missed that... Uh, you would like to say about you and me doing. If anyone has any questions about the um, upcoming workshop, feel free to get in touch with me via my website. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Um, and you know, one of the big thrusts of the day is going to just give people that um, candid accessibility to, you know, to two published authors, and that's you know not the most common thing in the world. Okay. So, and you you you'll, you promise you'll be gentle with the students. Of the <laughs> We've all been there, you know. Uh, I know. Well, I'm, I, I was amazed when I was on Colleen's and you told me all, almost 200 rejections. I think I would have stopped after, <laughs> I don't know, 50, yeah. even 100 maybe. Um, I, I always tell people that I'm, I was too stupid to stop. <laughs> but the truth is, is that when you get rejections, you have a choice. Uh, the choice is to stop yeah. or the choice is to look at it as it's just not where it needs to be yet. It, it, I need to grow as a writer. I need to find what is causing people. And one rejection could just be that person yeah. didn't like it. But when you get 10 rejections or 15 rejections, now you start saying, okay, something isn't working here. And so if you can get us uh, past the, re the, the emotions that come along with rejection, and you can say to yourself, what didn't I do well enough uh, to get an acceptance mm -hmm. here? And if you can go back as objectively as possible mm -hmm. and analyze what you've written and reassess things and revise, then it, it's a useful tool. Rejection is a useful mm -hmm. tool. And so we're going to be talking about that as well. And what about uh, another aspect? I'm sure you've done this and other authors I've talked to here. Working with an editor, what is, is there a component to this? What, what, is that, what is that is like or what you should expect? Or mm -hmm. maybe they'll be rejecting things of the, of the right. writing. Um, you know, so many aspiring writers that I talk to are just praying for someone to accept their book. Um, I approach it a little differently. Um, my attitude is I want an editor who loves my book as much as I do. If I don't find that, then I'm not happy with my editor. Um, the reason is, the reason for that is that 
you, you need them to advocate for you. You need them to work on that in a way that they feel passionate about the work enough that they're going to pour themselves into it. Otherwise, it just kind of goes mm. through the, pro, the machine of the publishing company. Publishing companies are big yeah. things. And so if you don't have someone there that's advocating for your book in the way that it needs to be advocated, the way that you as an author yeah. would want to advocate for it, then you're not with the right editor. Now, are there things, you know, as a published author, you can maybe speak of this, um, are there some books that just sort of, I don't want to say just get thrown out on the shelf, and there are ones that they take more time with and um, give publicity and maybe, I mean, what's the, is there a difference? Yeah, that's the, that's the publisher side of things. Oh, yeah. I do see that happening, um, and I couldn't tell you why. I mean, I see some really wonderful books that don't get a heck of a lot of attention, and then I see some abysmal ones, in my opinion, abysmal oh, yeah. ones that are getting all sorts of, of marketing. That's the sort of thing that, as an author, you can't control. Oh, yeah. And so if I consume myself with thoughts of those things, I would consume myself. Oh, okay. Well, that's, um, okay, I think that's about it. This um, is an all-day workshop, June 4th, um, at the Hilton Garden Inn, an, over in Troy, up on Hoosick Street. I think it's, is that that new hotel there, right up? Yeah, Halfway right. up Hoosick, okay. Yep. And um, you can get information on ericlooper.com. It'll be right on the screen here. It does cost $99. You're going to be with Eric Looper, who I just talked to, Colleen Perator, between them, a very successful authors. And if you're an aspiring children's or young adult author, this could be the class that, what, gets you going maybe, or... <laughs> so thanks for being here, Eric, and um, if you're out there watching, if this interests you, contact Eric and take the workshop. So we'll see you next time on Getting to Know You. Yeah.